Now, I know because I've, I've heard so many amazing stories in this profession and I hear so many amazing stories from my students and people that you know get, get my different products or coaching. And I know that there's people on here that are in worse shape than I was in 2009. This isn't a I'm worse off than you kind of you know contest. And that's, by the way, that's a contest you never want to win, <laughs> right? You don't want to be the worse off. But I know there's people on here that are worse off than I was in 2009. And I'm just here to tell you that no matter where you are, you can get to where you want to go. You just got to do a couple things. And I'm going to talk about that in, in this webinar. There's a couple key things that you need to do. And I'm going to share with you some of the steps that you need to take. So we did go, or I, I guess I, I went, my, my wife was not in foreclosure, but I was. Uh, we went from foreclosure to Fiji in 24 months. We actually honeymooned in, uh, we did our honeymoon in Fiji at a place called Namale, which is owned by Tony Robbins. It was incredible. It was so amazing. And uh, it was just it was just so surreal. And the neat thing about that honeymoon trip is, you know, I was kind of concerned because I, I, I mean, I was so broke. I mean, I was so poor that, and I, and again, I know there's people on here that struggle and more than I was in 2009, but it, life was lean. Every single bill was paid late and I had bill collectors calling me every single hour. I programmed them in my phone so I would never pick up and but I can tell you, you know, two years later, being in Fiji, a place that, you know, most people don't even have on their bucket list because it's kind of so out there. It's like so like, whoa, that's like, you know, top of the world kind of stuff. And, uh, you know, what's wild about it is we came back from that honeymoon. We had made more residual income while we were gone than we spent on that trip. Now, that's crazy. Okay. Okay. And that made me realize, man, I have to teach more people how to do this stuff. I have to. I mean, because who doesn't want to travel the world and make more money than what they're spending while traveling? That'd be everybody. I mean, there's nobody that would say, hey, would you like to go and travel to amazing places all around the world and then, uh, you know, get paid more than you spend? Of course, the answer is yes. Uh, we have happy students all over the world, daily testimonials. I've been very blessed. Share the stage with you know, Les Brown, Brendan Burchard, Gary Vaynerchuk, Eric Worre, many more. Just been so blessed. It's really been a just like a dream life that, that we've been able to create. And also, before I, I get too far into this, uh, I do want to give a shout out because it's only it's one week away. Uh, my wife and I are doing our first ever event in the United Kingdom next Tuesday. So it's next Tuesday at the Rubens. You can check out um, the details. It's in London. Check out the details at rayhigdon.com forward slash London event if you're in or around that area. I know if, if you are, then it's very late for you. And I commend you. I see my friend Rebecca on here who is uh, like wonderful and awesome. And I'm so excited to see her. So awesome. <laughs> All right. So here's what you're learning. You're going to learn exactly how to spend your time to explode your business in the next 90 days. And I'm going to assume you're part time. I'm going to assume it, okay? So a lot of times you hear, you know, you hear strategies for 90-day blitzes and, 90, and and different things, and there's some great ones out there. I mean, my, my personal favorite is I love, uh, you know, I went to uh, Eric Warrior's Insanity Boot Camp. It was incredible. The guy's amazing. He's a beast. And uh, But, you know, a lot of the things out there, they're, they might be a little difficult to handle if you're part-time. So I'm going to, I'm going to, care for you here and I'm going to share with you a way to do things part-time as well so I'm not going to leave anybody out now all you have to do is you know you can magnify the things that I'm talking about uh, if you are full-time and I'm going to I'm going to tell you I'm going to, I'm going to give you a little secret when it comes to that so make sure you pay attention I'm going to give you the six critical steps you must take to accomplish way more now if you don't have the results in your business I am willing to bet there's one two or hell maybe all six that you aren't doing okay it's a big thing there's six critical notice those aren't six you know suggested or six optional or six you know might help you out steps these are six critical steps and you know what i find new network marketers that don't know these six steps every single day i ask them these questions and they're like no i'm not doing that oh i didn't know i was supposed to do it oh my goodness and I'm like, oh my God, these are the critical steps. 
you've got to learn these six critical steps, all right? You're going to learn the best way to talk to a warm market that will never burn them out. Let me just ask you this question. If I could show you a way to approach your warm market that will literally never burn them out or have them hate you or have them, you know, call you names or, or be nasty to you, if I could show you a way to talk to your warm market that will never burn them out, would that be cool? Would that be exciting? Anybody? Would anybody? Okay, so Adele says absolutely. Vicky says yes. Linda says way cool. Rebecca says super cool. You know, because here's the deal. People aren't turned off by network marketing because they don't understand network marketing. They're turned off by network marketers, okay? And it's, it's due to a couple things. Now, there are two extremes out there. Number one, you have the person that just isn't trained, and they approach their war market in a very bad way. That's not good. Okay, and then there's the other extreme that they're so worried about approaching them in the wrong way, they don't approach them at all. And then they get upset when they attend their company event and they see one of their friends walk the stage. They're like, dang it, why didn't I, why didn't I reach out to him? And so I'm going to share with you, you know, I'm just going to eliminate your stress in that department because you shouldn't be stressed about reaching out to your warm market. And I'm going to share with you how to do that. So I'm going to share with you, there's actually three of them and I'm, I'm going to talk about here tonight, how to avoid the most dangerous obstacles inside network marketing so you do stay on track. And uh, it's going to be exciting. So let's, let's move forward. And also, I'm going to do something. I, I, I'm really kind of, uh, I don't know, I'm going to do something really wild. All right. So stick around to the end. Uh, I'm going to share how every single one of you can get a one-on-one -on -one personal coaching call with me. So stick around. In fact, you want to stick around until you see this slide. <laughs> oh, what am I doing? It's craziness. All right, so make sure you stick around until you see that that slide. Um, by the way, my son Brandon picked the upper left one. He's like, ooh, use that slide. Use that picture. Dynamite. <laughs> he doesn't even know what that's from. It's so funny. So to better you, understand me, okay? The reason I've identified the reasons that I've struggled, okay, the reasons that I got into network marketing. Why? In February of 2006, a buddy signed me up into my very first network marketing company. Why didn't I blow it up? Why didn't I crush it then? You know, I made some sales. So I'm not saying that I totally, you know, didn't do anything, but why didn't I crush it? Well, here's the exact reasons. I didn't invest in my education. I, I took what I knew before network marketing as, well, surely this will work for this profession too. And the reality is network marketing is different. It is different. So you can take someone who is a successful business owner. You can take someone who's a successful realtor. You can take someone who's a successful author, right? You can take someone who's successful in anything that doesn't mean they're going to be successful in network marketing. It's a little bit different. There's a few things that are different. And most of the things are actually contrary to how you would think. See, most people think they have to be an amazing presenter. And did you know being an amazing presenter can actually hurt your duplication? You know, I could give a presentation for my network marketing company. I've, I've done it a billion times. But do you know I never do it in front of somebody. I always rely on a tool, 100% of the time. Why? Because if they see me do the presentation, some of them, and I'm not you know, trying to toot my own horn, but some of them are going to think, oh, I have to do that? I can't do that. Or I can't do it as good as him. Right? But if I use a tool, then they all can do that. Okay? But I'll tell you, I didn't understand that. So in the beginning, I thought I had to be presenter man. I thought I had to be super presenter. Because I was used to that world. See, in network marketing, that can actually harm you. But I didn't know that because I didn't invest my education. I did get around the right mentors. See, I was kind of my own mentor, right? I thought, oh, I'm really smart, right? And, you know, meanwhile, I completely failed in, in real estate, right? So <laughs> it's kind of funny looking back. But I didn't get around mentors. I didn't go to people that had you know, made it happen before. I didn't go to people that were more successful than me in network marketing. I didn't, I didn't. And that's one of the reasons I didn't have success. I didn't understand team building. I certainly didn't understand recognition, didn't understand building community. I was easily offended. 
And I'll tell you, that, let me explain what that means. Because of my history, I really don't get offended by no's, but I do, in the past at least, I used to get really offended by upline, by, you know, people that were in different teams that I thought were, you know, like, uh, you know, wanting to bite in on my action or whatever. And I, I, and I tell you, I used to be very, very easily offended with that, especially from my upline. You know, if I felt like I was working really hard but not getting any recognition, sometimes I would have a problem with that. And, you know, it's there's a lot of different things. And I lacked vision. You know, I was doing network marketing, and I was hoping I would build a residual income, but I really didn't have a vision. You know, I was just doing it kind of, you know, I hope this thing works out. But, uh, you know, I, I wasn't doing it. I, and I'm just curious – any of that, does anyone resonate with any of those or maybe all of those? Has anyone ever struggled with any of those areas? So Joe says, of course. Kristen says, yes. Andre, absolutely. So, yeah. You know, I mean, there's there's just a lot of things. There's a lot of areas that if I knew what I'm going to share with you here tonight, I would have had success. I'm just, I'm just letting you know. In all those different companies. I, w I would have had success. And so a little bit different. So you have to stop relying. And this is one of the hardest things for people to do. You have to stop relying on what you think you know and instead look at your results. This is so big. This is so big. You know, and it's such a tendency to sit on a webinar and say, ah, I've heard this before. I know this. There is nothing new here. But then you don't have the results in your life. So did you really hear it? And see, this was a big challenge for me. And I'll tell you, you know, when back in 2009, I actually went to a transformational seminar, some of you may be familiar with, called Landmark. And, you know, I went into that seminar. I know this stuff. I've been to events before. But something clicked for me. And the, the, it's funny because the instructor actually said, some of you are listening to the voices in your head that are saying that you've heard this before. And I'm like, wow, that's kind of neat. I've never heard someone say that, right? And, you know, because of that little thing right there, and this is what's so sacred about being a trainer, and I hope that, you know, some of you on here, maybe you want to become a trainer at some point. Just curious, who, who wants to become a trainer? I know, I mean, I know not everyone wants to be a, a trainer, but, um, okay. So, uh, Angela, Patricia, Jacob, Dan, let me tell you, man, training, trainers, it's, it's a sacred occupation. You literally, you have such power in that platform, and it's just, it's so sacred, it's so blessed, it's so amazing to be able to impact other people. And so... Because of what that one instructor said, what that trainer said, and I heard it, and I changed the way that I was paying attention, and I really was present to the training. Because of that, I was able to repair a relationship with my dad that I hadn't talked to in 13 years. And I'll tell you, you know, I see stuff all the time. I just saw a buddy of mine, and uh, unfortunately didn't have a great relationship with his father, and and his father just passed away. And, you know, the wild thing about that is, and we're, you know, this isn't actually, uh, you know, a full-blown mindset, but I'm kind of feel. sometimes, sometimes I get into trainings and I kind of feel the need to go somewhere that I didn't really plan on going. And I'm kind of getting that feeling. And so I'll tell you this, for those of you who have baggage, which would be all of you, <laughs> let's be honest, I have it too. Right? There's still relationships I need to clean up too. So I'm you know, I'm not saying you're you need to do this and I'm perfect. I'm not saying that at all. Okay. We all have baggage to clean up. But here's what happened when I got rid of my baggage. Okay. When I got rid of that, you know, that um, problem. I don't know. Wait, I don't know what you call it. When I got rid of that that trash, that head trash. I like that that term Noah St. John uses. When I got rid of that head trash and I repaired that relationship with my dad, you know, 10 days later is when I joined the last network marketing company that I was with and became the number one earner from foreclosure. It's interesting. 
See, we're always looking ahead. We're always looking at tactics. We're always looking at all these different things that we need in our life. But sometimes, sometimes we have to at least glance backwards and repair something and give some attention to something, give some energy to something. And so I encourage you, you know, when you have those, those unforgivens, okay, when you have those relationships that are on a, a to-do list with no priority, people pass away. People pass away. So my encouragement to you is, you know, pay attention to this webinar, but you might want to jot down some people that you want to repair a relationship with. All right, let's move forward. i got to keep you guys excited. Let's not go to sad land, all right? Oh, let's rock. So here's how to spend your time. And I can assure you, you are either, you are either hitting your numbers or you're not doing what I'm going to share with you in this one slide. Okay, how to spend your time. So when you're part time, your time is way more precious than money. This is so important for you to understand. Your time is so precious. It's so precious. Okay, your time is so precious when you are part time. Now, obviously, it is precious full time too, but it is so precious when it's part time. When you are part time, you have to be effective. You have to, or you're going to dink and dunk this profession forever. Mm. You're going to have people say, hey, haven't you been doing that for like 25 years? And you're going to say, yeah, because you've been dinking and dunking it. I'm telling you, you follow what I'm going to share with you tonight, and you really implement, and you take action, you can knock this thing out. Now, I'm not saying that in 90 days, you'll, you know, that everybody's going to be at $10,000 a month. I can't guarantee that. In fact, I mean, just to use my example, in, in my last company, it took me five months to get there. It took me five months to get to 10000 a month. And that's abnormal. Okay? Sometimes, what if? I love playing this scenario. What if? What if you really dropped the hammer and you worked as hard as you could, but it took you two years to get to 10000 additional a month? Think about that. Would that be worth it? I mean... Yeah, it would totally be worth it. Absolutely. You have to be effective with your time. Your time management will dictate the velocity of your success. The speed at which you rank advance is totally 100% equated to how you manage your time. It is not that you need more time. See, some people think the reason that they're not succeeding is because they're part-time. And if only they had more time. Let me tell you, how you manage your time when you're part-time is how you're going to manage your time when you're full-time, too. Okay? You'll find yourself cleaning the garage, you know, cleaning the grill. You'll be sharpening pencils. You'll be scrubbing the ceilings. You'll be resurfacing the driveway. You'll be doing all these nonprofit producing activities. If you waste time and you're part time, you're also going to waste time full time. Just letting you know. I know that's harsh. I'll tell you one of the one of the things I don't suggest. I don't suggest that you go full time too soon. Okay. I would rather you focus and be effective on your time. Do it part time as long as you can, and build up that income. I'd rather see you do that, okay? So when you talk about time, when it's on hours, now what's on hours? Well, I'll give you two answers for this, okay? Typically, on hours is like nine to maybe six, maybe seven, depends on kind of your culture, your community, you know? And the reason I told you I'd give you two is, well, some people call other time zones. For example, if you're in California, and I'm in Florida, I'm three hours ahead of you. So when you wake up at 6 a.m., guess what? That could be on hours for East Coast. And see, you have to be creative with your time. And so some of you, maybe you need to start looking at that. Maybe you need to start looking at who can you prospect in other time zones to accommodate your schedule. Because maybe you have a crazy schedule. You know, let me just tell you this. Having a crazy schedule is never an excuse because here's the problem with a crazy schedule. Unless you create an alternate income, you're going to have a crazy schedule forever. What, what sounds better? 
you know, putting a little blood, sweat, and tears in now, or having your crazy schedule that you don't like forever. So when it's on hours, you need to prospect. And, you know, there's a lot of different ways you can do this. Some people war market, some people buy leads, some people, you know, obviously, you know, go to Facebook and, and things like that. Some people go to networking meetings, some people hold their own meetings. There's a lot of different ways that you can prospect. And it's funny when people ask me, they're like, well, Ray, where do I find people to talk to? Look around. If I can take the pressure off of you so that you're not so tied up in knots, then there's people all around you at all times. You know, I prospect people that, and I'll tell you, I'm a little picky, to be honest. I'm a little picky in that I tend to prospect people offline that I like their energy. So if I see someone and they're frowning face, I'm probably not going to prospect them. But if I see someone and they're energetic, upbeat, seems nice, I am absolutely going to prospect that person. Absolutely, all the time. Now, just so you know, I've created a lifestyle that allows me to be picky. Okay? If I was still in foreclosure, I would do what I had to do. And you know what? Some of you just aren't doing that. Some of you are attempting to be picky, but you're in a spot where you really need to take action. So when it's on hours, prospect. So this could be warm market calls, stranger chats, face-to-face, follow-up calls. You know, a lot of people, they, they would rank a zero in the follow-up section. Let me tell you, most, 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 most of the people that we recruit, we do not recruit on the first call. Now, I think some people assume that we're like master recruiters or whatever, but, you know, and I, I think we're pretty good. We've recruited quite a few people. But I'll tell you, it's rare for us to recruit someone on the first call. Okay? It's rare. So that follow-up is so important. Instead of constantly going out there and looking for new people, new people, new people, new people, new people, take a look at the people you've already talked to. you probably got, you know, 10, 20, 50, 100 maybe. Some of you maybe 1,000. Reach back out to those people. You know, don't, don't just throw them away if they don't sign up right on the spot. Now, if it's off hours, Facebook messaging, email replies, that's when you do your study. That's when you do, you know, these the sort of things. Like right now, you know, at least for me, I'm probably not going to call someone at 9 o'clock, right? That's why I have this webinar on, 9 o'clock, right? So I'm probably not going to do that. But let me tell you, what if, I, what if I have a crazy schedule and I come home and it's midnight? Well, what could I do? Well, I could study some. And maybe studying for you is 10 pages in a book. Maybe studying for you is it was watching a recording. You know, maybe it's, you know, reading an article, listen to an audio on the way home, right? But you can absolutely do Facebook messaging. You could respond to people through email. These are things you could do and you would want to do off hours. Now, most people, they don't have this distinction of on hours, off hours. They just do Facebook messaging, email replies during on hours, right? And then they're like, man, I don't have any time. Well, guess what? Have you ever gone on vacation? And you know what? who says this? And I first heard this from Tim Ferriss. But you ever go on vacation, you don't check email you know, for a day or two, and you come back, and you literally knock out all your emails in like 20 minutes, right? So if you don't check your email all day long, and instead you take that time to prospect, you're going to get more oomph. You're going to get more effort out of that. And, and I'll just you know, let you know, you know, tonight I'm not talking a lot about marketing, but you know, this idea of prospecting is what made me a number one earner. That's what made me. Okay? I, just, I just want you to know that. It is prospecting. I was, in fact, I believe I was over, I was somewhere between thirty and 40000 a month inside of network marketing before I was getting hardly any leads. I'm just letting you know. Now, some people look at you know where our business is now, and we get you know two to three thousand leads a month, and that's awesome. That's cool. But let me tell you, that's not how I got here. It's actually from the grind, and I'm going to call it a grind. I'm going to call it like it is. Do you think I wanted to prospect nonstop? It sucked. It was no fun. I didn't say yippee. Let's go call a bunch of people. I, I dreaded it. And I'll tell you, before every single call. I would look at the name on my list, and I would I would just think to myself, 
man, they're not going to say yes. They're not going to say yes. And then I'd be like, all right, snap out, snap out of it. I would snap myself out of it and I would call anyway. I'm telling you, I, I, I'm positive that some people think that you know, I'm just a magical dude and I never get bummed. I never, you know, I just called everybody and had no problem with it. I dreaded it. It sucked. It really was bad. I really didn't like it. But my least favorite thing to do is just pick up the phone and start hammering it, right? It's my least favorite thing to do, but it's so effective. And I, I just don't believe I'd be where I am without it. But um, So let me ask you this question. How do you spend your downtime? What do you do on your breaks? Let me tell you what most people do. Most people are at a job, and on lunch break, what do they do? What do they do? They hang out with the people from their job, and they go wherever they've gone for years for lunch. Or they bring their lunch, they sit in the lunchroom with people that are at the job. What do successful people do? They sit in their car, they make calls. You know, I'll tell you one thing that I used to do is my last job I ever had, I was at an insurance company, and on lunch, I would wolf down a couple, I think, I was, what would I eat back then? I think I was eating lean cuisine, all right? And it takes about three minutes in the microwave. Not the healthiest option, right? I would wolf it down, and then I would walk around. There was a lake behind the uh, corporate office there off of, for those of you in Naples, off Goodlip Frank, right? And so I, I would walk around the lake making calls. Why? Because I was working full time. I had to utilize every single ounce of my time. I had to. And so when I was walking around that lake, I was making calls, right? But what do most people do? They're doing the same damn routine that they've been doing for years, yet they want different results. So what do most people do when they get home from work? Plop down, flip on the TV. And let me tell you, you know, I watch a lot of movies. My wife and I, it's one of our favorite things to do. We love watching movies together. We love watching, you know, some Netflix shows and things together. So I'm not, I'm not one of those guys that's, you know, prim and proper and saying, never watch TV, it's bad for you. But <laughs> if you're in a lifestyle that you're not happy with, cut that out. Stop doing so much TV when you should be using, you should be doing more UTV, right? You need to be picking up the phone. You need to be reaching out to people. If you keep the same routine, you're going to get the same results. It's so crazy to me that people are upset about their results, but they won't change their habits. And it's the habits that are creating the results. Oh, all right. Six critical steps. Now, this is something that you wish every single person you ever recruit into your network marketing company understands. Okay, you wish that. You wish that they understood these steps. Okay, here they are. Number one, you have to know the process. Okay. Any week, now there are some weeks where we recruit five or six people. There are some weeks we only recruit one or two people. Okay, what's the difference? How come one week is better than the other? It's so simple. It's the number of eyeballs we got on a presentation. That is the driver. And so you want more signups? Get more eyeballs on the presentation. Number two, use the product. Now, for some of you, mainly those in health and wellness, you're saying, uh, duh, what do you mean? Okay, well, some people in service-related things, they haven't even used the product, but they're trying to get sales. Okay, you got to use the product. Use your product. Be a product of the product. Know your product. Use it. Know the benefits of the product. It will help you overcome more objections than almost anything else. Number three, attend events. Okay, what you hope to get, get out of attending events is you hope that they're going to teach you some secret, right? I hope they give me the secret script. Well, they do, but in a different way than you want it. They do it by teaching you stories. And I don't mean stories like, you know, biblical stories or something like that. They do it by recognizing those who rank advance and allowing those that rank advance share their stories. See, that's what's key. If you want to, if, if you just do number two and number three, you're going to, and, and you pay attention to the process, you're going to be able to overcome objections like crazy. You know, the best way, in my opinion, to overcome objections 
is to use stories. You know, if someone says, ah, oh, that thing doesn't work, the best way for you to overcome that story, for you to overcome that objection, is to say something like, okay, man, you know, I understand what you're saying, but you know what? I just saw a guy give his acceptance speech in sign language because he was born deaf. I actually saw that at an actual event. Okay? See, that's, that's one of the biggest things you get out of events. And when those people are walking across stage, I want you to see yourself walking across stage. I want you to know what would you say for your story? How would the crowd be impacted? There's a little bit of visioning for you, which I'm going to talk about a little bit later. Okay? But I also want you to pay attention to their story. What did they do before network marketing? What kind of results have they created? What kind of obstacles were in their way? Why did they join? See, those are really, really powerful, critical components because if you learn that, you're able to overcome almost any objection by just using stories. Number four, invest in yourself. This is investing the time and money into making you better. Why? Why would I say that? Because I, I hoped, I planned that the first network marketing company that I joined in February 2006 would be the it. I was, you know, was going to crush that thing. I was going to make it happen. It didn't happen that way. But you know what? Along the years, I have always invested in myself. No matter where you go, there you are. I'm telling you, I don't know if you're in the company you're going to you know, be with forever. I don't know. But I do know whatever company you are in, you'll be there. <laughs> you will be there. It's impossible for you not to, right? So invest in yourself. Be bold. And, you know, I'm kind of of the extreme in this nature. I don't ever, ever, ever tell someone to do something that I haven't done, right, or that I don't believe in. You know, you guys do this, but I'm going to do this. I never do that. And so we kind of invest a crazy amount of money in ourselves. And I'm not saying that you need to, you know, invest the same amount or whatever, but you need to invest some. You need to buy products that are going to make you better. Get around mentors. Oh, this is, I mean, just so big. You know, you can, you can accomplish so much on your own. You really can. I believe in human spirit. I believe in the entrepreneur will. But you can also mow your grass with a pair of scissors, right? <laughs> why not use a mower? Or why not have someone else do it, right? Get around people who've been there, done that. Get around people that are having the lifestyle that you want. Instead of looking, listening to broke Uncle Joe or, you know, that, that co-worker that is, you know, miserable in their life and relationships, let's not listen to them. Let's listen to people who have the actual life we want. And you got to believe. And, you know, believe is a word that's kind of thrown around, I think, too much. But you have to believe that it's at least possible. You have to believe that it's at least possible for you to create success inside this profession. You got to believe it. And one of the best things for you to build that belief is attending events. Now, unfortunately, most people use all the reasons why they, you know, why they don't go to an event. Okay. All those reasons that they use to not go are all the reasons they should go. They'll say things like, I don't have the money, or I don't have a team, or I don't have anyone going. All of those are reasons you should go. When do you hire a tutor? When you have an A+, plus or when you want one? Okay? Just so critical. And, you know, for those of you who have, you know, who have large teams, I hope you, do you appreciate me saying that? I'm just curious. For those of you who have teams, do you appreciate that I'm constantly pounding that your people need to get to the events? Just curious. Yeah, oh, I mean, I hope so. I mean, I'm, I'm pounding this message. And I always cringe when I see, you know, someone that's teaching in our profession that, you know, let's be honest, hasn't really built a team. And they're teaching our profession anything against any of these six steps. Okay. These six steps are the critical six steps. I'm telling you, would not be where I am without these six steps. Now, never burn them out. I told you about this. Stop being the weird Emlyn person, don't don't make this weird, okay? And I want you to think about what would you do if you started a business outside network marketing? So if you started a, you know, I always use this this example, but you know, what if you started a pizza restaurant, right? How how are you going to approach your warm market? Let's get out of the weird MLM space because here's what I see. 
I see someone that, you know, maybe, maybe I know someone and I've seen them around or maybe we went to high school together or whatever. And, you know, I've, I've never, I've never seen them as a, someone who really cared that much about business. You know, I just kind of see them as a regular person and I don't see them as someone who's, you know, really, you know, fired up or, you know, an entrepreneur or anything like that. But then when I, when I see them, all they talk about is money. And I, I think they assume that that's what I'm maybe interested in. I don't know. Let's not be weird. If you started a business outside network marketing, if you started a pizza restaurant and I was your friend, I hope and I believe that you would call me and you would say, hey, friend, hey, Ray, I just started this pizza restaurant. I'd love it if you come by and check it out. Right. You, you would be you would lead with the product. OK, you wouldn't say that I should invest in your pizza restaurant. You wouldn't say that I should start my own pizza restaurant. You'd say, hey, love for you to come check it out. Right. And so I know that you want more business builders. But if your warm market doesn't see you as already an entrepreneur, lead with the product. And I'll tell you this, too. If you're like me and you've been in a whole bunch of different network marketing companies, your warm market and you've pitched your warm market, all of them, your warm market is now burnt out from the money message. They are immune. They're vaccinated from the money message. So you could literally call them and say, hey, uh, I'm going to drive over there, hand you a dollar bill, or you hand me a dollar bill and I'll hand you a 50. And they'll say, no thanks. They don't even hear what you're saying because they're immune to your money message. So if you know that your network, that your warm market has seen you in a bunch of different companies, don't pitch them the opportunity. They're immune to it. In fact, you may want to go a little anti. See, this is this is what I do. This is what I did with a bunch of people that I knew didn't really care for network marketing. And so this is what I said. I said, hey, I know this business is a fit for isn't a fit for you, but I think you might like the product. I know this business isn't a fit for you, but I think you'll like the product. Isn't that powerful? I'm going to say it one more time and we're going to move forward. We, get, we still got a lot. I know this business isn't a fit for you. But I think you'd like the product. See, that's the perfect line to say to someone who's now immune to your money message. And you know why? Because they've never heard that. They've never had a network marketer say that to them. Very, very powerful. Okay? Don't be addicted to the outcome. I know this is, I know people, when they hear this, they say, well, it's easy for you to say, Ray. You know, you, you make money. It's easy for you to say. It is that attitude that got me here. Is I didn't develop it. I didn't say, now I'm at a level where I no longer care. No, it is being, it is being of that mindset and, and energy that got me here. See, that's the difference. I didn't develop this once I hit a rank or hit whatever, right? This is what got me here. Very powerful. But I got a lot more training on that. All right, so the big obstacles. Forgetting why you're doing what you're doing and not even knowing who you want to become. You see, I talk a lot about vision, right? I talk a lot about it. In fact, I'm going to share something with you where I have an entire module on vision here in a little bit. Okay, Who you want to become. That is the most important thing in my opinion. Now, some people, they'll hear that, and on the surface, they'll say, well, that sounds selfish. Shouldn't it be about other people's, right? Shouldn't it be about impacting others? Well, absolutely. But do you realize... It's a certain type of person that impacts others. See, you still have to see you. Who are you becoming? You have to see that. See, I wanted to become someone who impacts and inspires others. Now, you may take that on the surface and say, well, that's, you know, that's, that's focus on outside. It's actually not, weirdly enough. It's focusing internally on what I want to grow into. I wanted to become someone who made an impact with people. And, you know, now, and, and believe me when I say this, okay, we are absolutely so grateful that we get so many testimonials in, that so many people are commenting on, you know, our videos and, and, and different things. We're so grateful. My goodness, we are so just scratching the surface. 
there, I'm going to let you know, there's going to be times when we run events of 50,000 people. I'm just letting you know. I'm just letting you know. I've already seen it. And see, it's impossible for me to see something and it not happen. It's impossible. Okay? Now, I'm not saying this is next year. I'm not saying this is two years. I'm not saying it's even five years. I don't know what year it is. I don't know. But I'm letting you know, there will be a time when we're giving this kind of training in front of 50,000 people. And I don't even know if it's for a company. It might be our own event. Who knows? But I'm telling you it's there. Okay. Next one, getting frazzled by naysayers, the dream stealers that don't have the lifestyle that you want anyway, but you're letting them frazzle you. The next one, constantly seeking acceptance and approval. This is a killer. Let me just tell you, you aren't going to get acceptance and approval. <laughs> you're not. You know, this isn't like, you know, did I buy the right sweater? Right. You know, when you buy like a shirt or a sweater or, you know, new shoes and you kind of go to your friends. Hey, what do you think? Right. And most of them are like, oh, I just love it. Those are beautiful. Right. Or there's something right. You're going to get some acceptance and approval when you're shoe shopping. You are not going to get unless you just your warm market just happens to be a bunch of network marketers, which, you know, would be kind of strange. Right. You're not going to get acceptance and approval. I'm just telling you right now, you're not going to get it. Stop seeking it. And I'll tell you, every single top runner I have ever met in this profession, they, too, didn't get acceptance and approval. They didn't. But they also didn't look for it. Okay? Stop seeking acceptance and approval. And here is the only way. Do you want, do you want me to teach you the one strategy to no longer have any naysayers? Let me, let me see this. Who wants to know that? Who wants to know the one strategy? What if tomorrow you wake up, no more naysayers ever? See, you guys, are, you're ready for some magic, right? You're ready for some like, whoa, wait a minute. I've never heard this. Wow, what's going on here? Some of you are saying, please, 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 yes, let's do this, right? If you want to know how to stop having any naysayers in your life, then just stop reaching for your goals. <laughs> I know, it's terrible, isn't it? I tricked you. But the point I'm making is you will never get rid of naysayers if you're reaching for extraordinary goals, never, ever. I'm telling you, there's so many, read the success stories. You know, uh, I mean, you had Elvis Presley was like thrown out of Opryland because they, they thought he was so terrible, right? You know, Jimi Hendrix, I mean, he's got a crazy story too where they're like, this no talent, and they wrote up this real bad review on him. I'm telling you. It, you, you are either, if you want to be one of the herd and stop reaching for extraordinary goals and an amazing life, well, that's when your naysayers will go away. I don't want that life. I'm wanting you to understand. I have naysayers. You know, naysayers targeted my YouTube channel and got it shut down, right? I have naysayers. If you are playing big, you're going to have naysayers too. You're going to have naysayers. Okay? So just be okay with it because they're going to be there. The only thing, there's, only, there's literally only one thing in the universe that you can do, and that is just start playing small. If you play small, no one cares enough to badmouth you. No one cares enough to naysay you. No one cares enough to steal the dreams that you don't have. Okay? I choose to play big. I hope you do too. Now, a couple questions for you. So why are you doing this? Do you want to spend more time with loved ones? Have you really painted this out? And I love one thing that I always see is someone will say, yeah, I just want to retire my spouse. And I'll ask them, okay, cool. So what are you going to do when they're retired? How will your average Tuesday be? And they almost always look kind of with an I don't know because they haven't sought. They haven't actually mapped it out. They haven't actually planned it. You have to see it for you to achieve it. Every single thing. I know this sounds crazy. Everything we've achieved, we saw first. Now, I'm not saying I saw every single detail, but in some instances, I did. In some instances, I did. In some instances, I went to my vision book 
and pulled up a picture that I'd cut out three years before and we're literally in the same place. We're in a place where that picture was taken and I didn't even realize it. You need to see it. You need to see what you want to accomplish. Some of you, and I, hey, I resonate with this. I had a lot of people doubt me, right? Maybe you just want to show those who doubted you. Maybe you want to show them what you're really made of. Maybe you want to prove them wrong, right? Maybe, okay? Maybe you want freedom. I believe everyone wants freedom. You want the freedom to do what you want, with who you want, when you want, why you want, right? And for some of you, that's, you know, impacting charity. Some of you, that's leading a congregation. I know, I always have pastors on here. I know that. Some of you, that's, it's transforming your church. I get it. That's cool. That's awesome. Some of you, it's creating new projects. Some of you, it's creating that amazing family dynamic. Okay. Maybe, just maybe, maybe it's about creating a life that's significant. Significant. You know, to me, success means two main things. Contribution and growth. If I'm not growing, I'm not happy. Okay? I need to be growing. I need to, and I also, at the same time, I need to feel like I'm contributing. You know what's great about network marketing? To me, it's the greatest contribution platform that exists. You know, if you do great at your job, you may impact a couple people. You know, if you do great in this profession, you can impact tens of thousands of people. You can impact hundreds of thousands of people. You know, we just had our, you know, with the company that we're with, our, um, they did a write-up on our story. And they sent that magazine out. You ready for this? To over 200,000 people. Now think about that. What could I have done outside of network marketing to share that story and inspire and impact people to how 200,000 deep? I don't know. I'm not sure. But we just did it. And you can too. So I don't know why you showed up tonight. I hope, first of all, before I move forward, I got some cool stuff. And I'm going to share with you a couple more little strategies here. Have you gotten some value so far? Did you have a little aha moment? I always look to help you with the aha moments. You want to have an aha moment? All right, so Jacob says, yes, sir. Absolutely, many. Okay, cool. I don't know why you showed up, and this is where I get a little real with you. Maybe it's because you get on all my webinars. Thank you. I appreciate it. Awesome. I hope my goal for you is not to receive a thank you, but to receive your story. Is to receive you telling me, like my buddy, I always talk about this guy. I love this guy. But my buddy, Eric Newman, you know, he wrote me a testimonial a few months back and he said, Ray, I've been in network marketing for 18 years. And because of your training, I had my first thousand dollar month. Goosebumps. I'm like, wow, that's so awesome. That's so cool. Right. Maybe it's because you get on all my webinars. Maybe you just schedule a certain amount of time each week into growth. Or maybe, maybe you're serious about changing your life. Well, I know, and I hope that you understand this too, if I had to start it all over, if someone took my wallet away from me, they took my email list away from me, they took my rank in my company away from me, and threw me out in Abu Dhabi, right, I would get to where I am twice as fast. Because I know all of those things that I shared with you earlier that held me back, but I also know what's holding you back. And I'm going to share with you tonight how you can overcome what's been holding you back Use some of the things that I talked about here tonight and do something really, really cool with me. And I think you're going to like it. So here's a question. Will you take the pieces that you learned tonight and apply to move forward? Or do you feel that you might do better with me over your shoulder? Okay. Maybe. Let me show you. Okay. Saw this the other day. Absolutely love it. If you want to be successful, find someone who's achieved the results you want. Copy what they do and you'll receive the same results. Anthony Robbins. Amazing, amazing dude. So what I have is I have a 90-day blueprint. Now, this is a pretty new product. I've only told a few people about it. We had a small webinar on this not too long ago just to kind of test it out to see what the reaction was. 
And the reaction was amazing. So many people told me that they absolutely loved it. And this is something that I've been asked for years. Hey, Ray, I'm new to network marketing. What's the most complete product you have? Because I had something on prospecting, I had something on recruiting, I had something on closing, something on blogging, I had something on that, and all these different things. I didn't have this, and so we created it. This is, I'm telling you right now, it's the most complete training that I have in this kind of format. Now, we have 12-month masterminds that are quite pricey. You know, we fully admit that. You know, we, you know 12 as far as a digital product that is complete, this is the best. It's the best. It's the most complete thing that we have to help you explode your business in the next 90 days. Okay? So it helps you follow a system instead of just, I don't know what to do. So what is it? It's four complete modules, exactly what you need to know, and it assumes nothing. Now, that's really powerful for you no matter where you are. Okay? So some of you on here, you're like, well, I know a lot. I don't want it to assume nothing. Well, the problem can be sometimes that you know too much and you need to bring it back down to basics, not just for you, but for your team. Everything you need before it is inside and I'm going to share with you a few different bonuses here. Now, let me break it down for you. Module one, I call it the quit prevention program. <laughs> this is a module you wish every single teammate you've ever had would go through. I dive big time into routine. I cover part-time, I cover full-time. I cover what I do in my routine and what my suggestions are for you based on how many hours you have per week. This is a big, big deal. And you're going to step inside the mind of a business owner. Now, this is very different. And, you know, I came into network marketing with the mindset of a business owner. And it took me years to realize that not everyone came into network marketing with a business owner mindset. And so I literally teach you what took me years and years and years to find, to, to, to determine, to run a business. That's in module one, okay? Module two, you know, some of you may think that I'm exaggerating. I can assure you I'm not. Module two is the most complete prospecting recruiting I have ever put together for cold market, warm market, follow-up, the whole shebang. I'm telling you right now, I took every single thing that I knew about prospecting and recruiting, I put it in module two. I, it, it's crazy how much is in there. This is perfect if you've never had success before to help you build your posture and you're going to be empowered regardless if you failed before. Module three, I talk all about team duplication, inspiring them, not managing them, and helping you avoid all the gotchas that, hey, some of them, to be honest, hit me. I didn't understand until I worked with a few guys that had made a lot more money than I had, and I'm gonna go through that in module number three. I also talk about meetings and how to run teams of people to have them constantly inspired. Module number four, how to convert non-supportive spouses into adoring cheerleaders. I've done this so many times for different teammates of mine and different people in the profession. I can assure you, this is awesome. If you struggle with this right here, Module 4 is absolutely going to work it, worth it for you. You're going to be able to move from part-time to full-time by following what's in Module 4. And most importantly with that, when to make the move. See, most people don't know when to make the move. This will teach you when to know when the timing is right. I do teach you some very basic lead generation, lead generation tactics. And let me be clear on that. If you are terrible at technology, you'll be able to follow module four. Okay, there's nothing, you know, uh, there's nothing tough to understand in any of these modules. I kept it very, very straightforward, very simple, very core fundamental elements of network marketing. And then, maybe my favorite personal part, I talk about visioning your dynasty, visioning your empire, visioning your legacy of building a real empire. Really, really cool. I think you're going to like it. So the question some of you may have, how much is this going to cost me? Well, I'll share with you a couple things here. In the last two years, we've ran two different 12-month mastermind groups. Over 40 people have paid us between 12000 and up to 50000 in a transaction. 
Now, we have some clients that have paid us almost $100,000 over the last two years. That's real. Some of them are on this webinar tonight, all right? It's a lot of money. My wife and I, now if you notice, those of you who are on my webinars, you notice that number has been updated because we just hired another guy. <laughs> we hired a guy that he has two other clients. Those two clients, one of them has a $30 million a year business. One of them has a $60 million a year business. He only has two clients. I'm his third client. Now, here's what's neat. When I learn something, you learn something. Because when I learn something, I have to teach it. And so I can, I'm willing to bet we just initiated this guy. I'm willing to bet I'm going to learn quite a bit. And I'm going to pass that on to you. Okay? We've invested tens of thousands in courses and programs. Tonight, you can get everything that I'm going to share with you here in a minute for $147 or two payments of 87 bucks. I wanted to make this so no-brainer. And if you're, if you're looking at this and you're like, wow, that's a really good price, uh, just stick around. Wait till you see the insane bonuses that I have for you tonight. You're going to get all four modules. Here's what's neat about that. They're already recorded. You'll be able to download them right away. Okay? You'll know exactly what to do for the next 90 days, but you're going to get much more. So if you'd like to check out the bonuses and secure your seat, go to rayhigdon.com forward slash your first 90 days. That's rayhigdon.com forward slash your first 90 days. And before I get into questions and before I share with you the other bonuses, if you want to follow along, rayhigdon.com forward slash your first 90 days. Okay? Now, I love people that take action. I just love them. I think they're awesome. The first 10 people that order tonight, you're going to get a bonus 15-minute one-on-one call with me in September. Now, I want to let you know, and I don't know if he's on here tonight. He might be. But I just did a coaching hour for $1,000 for a networker in Lima, Peru. Okay? 1000 bucks. So that is a good bonus there. Now, I have a few more I'm going to give all of you. But the first 10 people, and I have Thomas. He's on this webinar. He's kind of monitoring the... You know, the dealio. But those, the first 10 that go to rayhagdon.com forward slash your first 90 days, you're going to get a bonus 15 minute one on one personal phone call. Now, if you're out of the country, it'll be over Skype. And why am I saying uh, in September? Well, we leave Sunday for London and we're away for a little bit. And so it's going it's to have to be in September. Just letting you know, just giving you a full disclosure. Okay. But watch out for these, check out these bonuses. So the 90 day blueprint this is four modules of the training. Everything that I talked about helps you uncover any holes that you have in prospect or team building. I'm also going to have a bonus Q&A webinar strategy session with you. And so that's a live Q&A webinar. And I'm going to schedule this out a little bit because I want to make sure you go through all four modules so that you're really armed to the teeth with this training. But you're going to have a live Q&A webinar. We're going to dive deep into you and your business. That's a retail buy of $97. You're going to get a prospecting power up on audio. Now, I actually created this a little bit ago, but I've never offered it as a bonus in any other product other than a product called the PowerMind. Um, but if you ever have to call on prospects and you struggle with rejection, literally listen to this that I recorded in my own voice to help you get fired up before those calls. I've had people tell me when they listen to this before they make calls, they, they feel so much better when they're calling those people. Now, this is something that's a retail buy of $29. I'm also going to share with you my most popular audio, my, my most popular single audio that we've, I mean, we sell these things like crazy. Maintaining your power. It's a private speech I gave in Philadelphia. Some say, my buddy Jake actually said it was my most powerful training I've ever done. And that was back, I think it was like 2010, early 2010. It's a killer audio. Uh, it's a retail buy of $10. That's another bonus for you. So quite a few different bonuses. And for those that are following along, you like bonuses, I do have one more I'm going to share with you here in a second, so stick around. But that's a total value of $433, and you can get it today for $147 or two payments of $87. Now, we just made it to where it was like so easy for you to do. We've given you a bunch of different bonuses. Um, I told you that the first 10 are going to get a 15-minute coaching call with me. I just, I know that this is going to help you so, so much. And to sum up, you're getting everything that.
by uh, buddies of mine, no excuses, and I, I really wanted to win their affiliate contest. And so this is the last time, that was the last time I ever threw out something like this. That was back in 2010. And uh, by the way, I did win that affiliate contest, which was pretty sweet. But uh, here's what I'm going to do, and this is for tonight and tonight only. Those of you who are watching it right now, here's what I'm going to do. For those that buy tonight, not just the first 10, all of you are going to get a 15-minute one-on-one call with me personally. Now, there's two things there, okay? There's two things. Number one, this will not be tomorrow. It will not be in August. I'm just letting you know. It will be in September. And you must go through the four modules first. Now, why do you think I would say that? Does anyone know why I would, I would make that mandatory? I'm just curious. Just curious. Do you know why? Yeah, because there's things in the training that there's no reason for me to, you know, to, to reteach you. Go through the four modules, and after that, we will have a 15-minute one-on-one call. That's a $250 bonus, and just to recap you here, so you're getting 90-day blueprint, the live Q&A, prospecting power-up, maintaining your power, the 15-minute personal call for those that buy tonight, $683. You're getting it for $147 or two payments of $87. That's the deal. RayHigdon.com forward slash your first 90 days. I wanted to mix things up. I wanted to hear from you, and I'm telling you, I am going to listen to you on these 15-minute coaching calls, and this is a personal one-on-one call. Again, it's a little crazy, all right? It's a little crazy to be doing this, but I'm just, I'm so excited about this new program. We want to get a bunch of testimonials for it and really build this out, and then it won't stay at 147. It will, it will be going up in price. But I'm excited to get your guys' feedback from it. I think it's the most complete train that we've put together in this kind of format. And we're really excited about it. You do get in many of the access, get all the bonuses. All right. So now I am grateful for you. I hope you got benefit out of this. Congratulations to those of you who take action tonight. And I'd love to answer any questions. I would love if you have any kind of questions, more than happy to answer them. Okay. I love this one. You guys okay with answering a question that most trainers would shy away from? Is that okay? <laughs> oh, I love my job. I love what I do. So, my I'm not going to say her name because I imagine she might not be happy um, with me saying her name. But um, someone says on here. Now, I just want to I want to let you know, most trainers would never ever read what this person just wrote, but I'm going to read it because I love what I do and I want you guys to understand a couple things. So my trainer said you were really good and truly wanted to help people. I am very disappointed. It let me down. I don't have money to invest. Um, Did you, I, I don't have the money to invest that you did when you first started. So there's a couple lessons there. Okay. First of all, someone taught me a long time ago that you had to prepare yourself for disappointment. Okay? You, you literally have to prepare yourself for disappointment. So this person right here is saying, uh, I'm really disappointed, okay? and I don't have the money to invest like you did when you first started. Even though I've already shared that I was in foreclosure, that my girlfriend was paying my utility bills, and I too didn't have money to invest. And, and I'll tell you, when you don't have money to invest, your mind is your worst enemy. It is. So my suggestion to this person is don't buy. That's okay. If you can't pay your utility bills, if you can't put bread on the table, don't buy. But it is a damn shame that that is all you got out of this training. That is a horrific sin that that is all you got. When you have a family that needs you to step up, when you don't have the money, at least take the learning. I just spent an hour and 16 minutes, and yeah, 
the last 15, I talked about the program, but a freaking hour from someone who's doing a million dollars plus a year, and that's what you got. Is it a wonder why people are stuck? Is it a wonder why they go from disappointment to disappointment? You see what we're up against, guys? We're up against people that are so broken in their mindset that they can't even take on a free training. Did I charge for access for this? Did I miss something? Did I say, hey, 99 bucks to attend this webinar? I gave you an hour of training before I even mentioned a product. But that's all this person got. You see, for those of you on here, now many of you raised your hands. You said, I want to be a trainer. I want to be a trainer. I want to be a trainer. You need to understand that is the mentality you're fighting. You have to help people get out of their own damn way. An hour of free training. I'm so disappointed. I'm telling you. And guys, you know, I use this energy level to really drive the point home. I'm not upset. I'm sad. I'm sad that someone that is clearly struggling didn't get anything out of an hour of free training, but instead found disappointment. So this person, unfortunately, I wish you the best. You know, and again, I'm not trying to get a sale. I'm not saying you need to really bone up and, and you know get some money from somebody. I'm not saying that at all. I want you guys to understand, those of you who want to enter the sacred realm of being a trainer, you need to understand. You need to understand this is what you're up against. You're going to do stuff. You're going to do stuff for free, and you're going to have people disappointed. You're going to have people disappointed. That's, but you, you have to. And let me, let me tell you a real quick story, and then we'll get to some more questions here. I, I've spoken at a lot of high schools on being an entrepreneur. I don't, I don't talk about network marketing because, you know, the teachers would be, eh, the parents would be, eh, so I don't talk about network marketing. I talk about being an entrepreneur. I've been an entrepreneur since, geez, middle school when I was selling airheads, right? You know, I'd get them for 10 cents, sell them for a quarter. That's being an entrepreneur, right? You're filling a need at a profit. And so I've spoken at a lot of times on being an entrepreneur. And there was one time I was at Cape Coral High School. Some of you may know it. I was at Cape Coral High School. And I'm doing my little thing. I'm talking about being an entrepreneur and the importance of following your passion. And half the class is sleeping, Right? You know, there's some girls in the back passing notes, giggling. And I left there and I thought, you know, should I even do this anymore? I mean, should I even do it? It's not like I'm compensated. I mean, I go, I do it for free, right? And, I, you know, I do it because I, I, it kind of makes me feel good if I get any kind of connection. But on this particular day, I didn't really feel any connection. I felt, I, I really felt like no one was listening. And so I'm like, you know, do I really keep budgeting time for this? I mean, there are people that want my help. Do I keep budgeting my time? And about two weeks later, a guy posted on my Facebook, my fan page actually, posted on my Facebook fan page. And he said, uh, hey, I just want to thank you for speaking to our class a couple weeks ago. Me and my buddy started our first lawn care business. Thank you so much. We had never heard anything like it. And I was like, oh, my God. Wow. You see, not everyone on this webinar is like, yes, Ray, I got major value. Some are not paying attention. Some were probably playing, you know, Candy Crush. Some were maybe watching a movie halfway through. Who knows, right? But if there's one person on here that I can help create a more impacting life, then I'm going to keep freaking doing them. I'm going to keep freaking doing these things if I can impact one person a night. I'm telling you. All right, let's move forward. Woo! Let's do this. All right. Some of you are excited. Awesome. Nice. George, George got the course. Very nice. Uh, Steve says, uh, amazing content. Thank you. You are welcome, my friend. Hmm. Until when will the 147 price be up? 
You know, I did. I didn't put a. Um, I'm sorry. Let me say this over. Adele asks, "Until when will the the, the 147 price be up?" Um, you know, I, I didn't put a urgency. This is going to increase on Friday, kind of thing. I kind of did that more with bonuses, just to kind of you know teach you sales. Um, so, um, I don't know. We don't have an actual date for that, Adele. Um, my guess is the next week it'll be like that. Um, cool. All right, so Netta says uh, your trains provide value. Thank you so much. Um, ooh, that is, I like this, Molly. So Molly, Molly suggests uh, a topic suggestion, uh, the language difference between leading someone and being accommodating. That's good. That's some advanced stuff. I like it, though. I like it, Molly. Very cool. Okay, great question, Netta. So Netta says, on my team, we're taught to shy away from prospecting cold market, but I need movement on my team, and I'm finding myself stagnant for lack of appointments. When you got started in the business, did you prospect cold market? Let me think about that. Um, yeah, <laughs> I totally did. Um, and let, let me tell you where that comes from, Netta. That comes from when some people... They come into this profession, and they have, and let me tell you, they earned it, so I, I don't want to talk bad about it at all, right? But they had a, a certain type of life before they came into network marketing that created a great warm market for them. Now, there's nothing bad about that, about that, what I just said. The only thing bad when it comes to training is... I embrace and understand the fact that not all of us have amazing warm markets when we step into network marketing. Okay? Now, the reason that I fully believe in teaching cold market is two reasons. Number one, there will always, and I don't care who you are, I don't care if you're the president, okay? there will always be more cold market than warm market. Always. You will always have more people you don't know than you do. Okay? The second reason is, at some point, you are going to recruit someone into your team that has no warm market. You know, and let's let's take a look at, you know, I'll, I'll use my wife as, as an example, right? She now has a great warm market, but when she started, she was very young. She was going to college. All of her friends wanted to party, and she didn't have credibility. She turned to Facebook and by following, just going, just doing Facebook, reaching out to people she did not know, she built a ten thousand a month income. Now, if I told her, "Don't you dare do cold market," I don't think she would be in this profession. I think she would have quit a long time ago. To be honest, now I could be wrong, and I, I'm not, I'm not trying to bash her or anything like that. But I can tell you, when she started, she. She just didn't have that credibility with her warm market. She had also moved. You know, she had lived in Orlando, kind of moved back, right? And I didn't know nearly what I know now, so I wasn't that I wasn't as good of a trainer, right? So, you know, here's my thing with cold market, though. I don't ever teach someone not to go after their warm market, okay? I say at least find out. At least find out if they're open to it. But as far as not going after cold market, I do not agree with that. Aw, thank you, Amanda. Got my cousin on here. Yeah, little things matter. Aw, thank you. Is conversion skill part of the topic covered? I can't, for some reason, I can't... Um, the name is kind of messed up, but um, so I can't I can't tell your name here. Sorry, I would usually give your name, but it says waiting for name, <laughs> so I don't know what that means. Um, is conversion skill part of the topic covered? Well, it depends what you're meaning by conversion. Okay, when I think of conversion, I think of marketing, like um, you know, someone goes to a sales page and purchases. That's a conversion. Um, if you're talking about closing. Yes, closing is absolutely 
cover. So if you're talking about converting a prospect to a recruit, then that is absolutely covered. And I'm telling you, I, I please don't skip ahead when you guys, I know you're going to be excited. I'm just letting you know, Module 2 is going to blow you away. Module 2 is hardcore recruiting and prospecting and closing. It's hardcore. And you can listen to it over and over and over. It's also, I did it in a way where it's really, really simple to follow too. All right. I love this question. Great question, uh, True Maine. How to get your team to training for duplication? Okay, so I, I think, if I'm reading it right, I believe you're asking uh, how to get your team to your company events, I believe. I think that's what you're asking. So I'm going to tell you, the number one way is to hunt and also create a story. That's the number one way. I'll tell you, you know, I have someone in my team that had, she, she'd been in the company for a while, but she went to a regional training and in the next five days recruited six people. I use that story all the time. But I also create my own story. So here's what not to do. I'm going to tell you some things that I know some of you are doing. What you don't do, you don't go to the event and then you do a recap. Hey, guys, let me tell you what you missed. You should really be at the next one. Don't do a recap. Don't recap them. Now, if there's some kind of important change, like in the comp plan or something like that, that you need to relay, then obviously relay it. But don't do a recap. I don't want someone getting the cliff notes. Okay? But what I do want them to see is I want to see them see me crush it. I want people to say to me, dude, what's going on? How come you've been crushing so much? And I'm, I'm just going to point back to the event. I say, you know what? I went to that event. You might want to go to the next one. So you want to create a story, and people will, quote, unquote, want what you have. Okay? That's, that's how you get them there. I talk a lot about that, by the way, Tremaine. And that's in module, I think, three. Not 100%. Uh, Susan says, biggest takeaway, people join on follow-up. Yeah, it's true. Um, good question, Kim. Kim says, I'd like to do the two payments. Will I have access when I make the first payment of 87? The answer is yes. You will have access. Okay? And then it's um, 87, and I'd be, I believe it's 30 days later, it's, you get the second 87. Okay? So, um, yep, you will have immediate access. How many, I'm just curious, how many of you thought it was pretty cool that I read that first comment. <laughs> I, I want you, I want to really, I'm committed to teaching you guys this craft. I'm committed to teaching you uh, how to really be a trainer. And you need to hear that stuff. Because here's the problem. If I just read to you all the positive stuff, Ray, you're great. Ray, you're awesome. You're going to think that that's the norm. And let me tell you, on almost any webinar I ever do, free, I mean, Free. Let me let me preface this. Any free webinar I ever do, there was always a couple people. I'm disappointed, right? And it doesn't hurt me. It hurts them because they're looking for the negative. You see, you have to look for the negative. If you sit through something that you didn't pay for, and the first entire hour is training. And you're disappointed, but you're not where you want to be in life, that's a problem. That's a problem. But you have to understand, that's the majority of society. The majority of society looks for the negative. They look for what's wrong, right? And what do they happen? What happens? They find it. They find it. Ah, this guy's trying to make a living. I knew it. <laughs> you know, this guy's trying to make money. How dare he? I don't want to make money. Think about how ludicrous that sounds. If someone is, if someone has resistance to someone else making money, yet they want to make money, isn't there an energy problem there? I love seeing people make money. I love it. I love, I'm kind of weird, but I love watching infomercials. I love seeing trainers train and then offer something. And I'm the one that almost always buys. 
I buy so many crazy products and, and courses, but I do go through them. So make sure, you know, if you get this, make sure you go through it. And I do want your testimonial. But it's just crazy. If you're wanting to make more money, if you have resistance to others making money, that's a big problem. And I don't just mean me. I mean all the trainers out there. If you have resistance to trainers making money, but you want to make money, there's a problem there. All right. So let me... Let me see if there's a couple more. Oh, that's nice. Susan was on a call I did last night. You're welcome. Says it was amazing. Um, <laughs> I'm not going to read that one, but that was funny. Oh, that's nice, Leticia. Gave, gave you a higher level of respect. Uh, ticked you off, Steve. I get it. Hey, I understand. Just understand I'm not ticked off. I'm reading it for, you know, I, I here, here's how I play, okay? I play ball for those that want to play ball, okay? I don't play ball to the person that bashes playing ball. I, I don't play ball to try to convince everyone that they should also play ball. I play ball for those that want to play ball. And, you know, those of you who said, I want to be a trainer, that's who I'm speaking to. I'm speaking to that to those people that want to make the biggest impact and inspiration they possibly can. That's who I'm playing for. So I'm never affected when someone is, you know, upset, disappointed, or something like that because I, because I have something for sale, right? <laughs> I mean, they too have something for sale that they wish they were selling more. And if only they paid closer attention. They could make some more sales, okay? So I'm never upset. You know, it's kind of like, you know, if you ever if you ever watch a, you know, any sport, okay, the coach is always coaching the players. The coach is facing the players, okay? Now, there might be some heckling behind the coach, but does the coach, like, turn his focus from the players and say, hey, heckler, no, 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 you don't understand. We're trying our best out here. No. The coach friggin' ignores them. The coach doesn't pay attention to the heckler. The coach pays attention to the players. My big suggestion for you is understand there's always going to be hecklers behind you. There's going to be naysayers. There's going to be dream stealers. There's going to be people, I can't believe you tried to sell me, tell me something. Right? You're going to have that. That is going to happen. Keep your focus on the players. Just like my, my Cape Coral High School story that I shared with you. For a minute there, I took my eyes off the players. And I'm looking at the stands, and no one's paying attention. Everyone's asleep. But then I get that message from a player that says, what you did impacted me. That's who you pay attention to. And in the future, when you're running a webinar, and you got you know six, 700 people on that webinar, you're going to have some naysayers, just letting you know. <laughs> just letting you know. You're going to have it. Remember this night. Remember this training. Remember that first comment that I read to you. And you'll carry on. And you'll say, ah, well, there's just someone in the, in the spectator stands. And, you know, they didn't unfortunately get something out of it. And that's okay. But a lot of people did. Well, listen, guys. I have to get my son to... Uh, uh, he's got uh, cross country practice at six thirty in the morning. At uh, he's, he's high school cross country. It's getting a little late for for me. I love you guys. I'm excited for you, and I really do mean it. Um, I really like this product. I really put a lot of effort into it, and I really think you'll like it. I'm looking for testimonials. Please, as you go through the product, hit me up. With some testimonials, of course, if you're getting value, you know, make sure obviously you you know, feel it's a great product, um, and I'd love to feature you on the sales page. So I love you guys. I hope a lot of you <laughs> got value, and appreciate you sticking around with me. And I will see you guys soon. Talk to you guys soon. Love you guys. Bye bye.